What's going on YouTube? This is Metal Complex and today we're going to be looking at kind of an oddball. Uh, this is the 511 or 5.11 Tactical Scout Tanto and uh, I actually was not planning on doing this one today. This came as a, a complete surprise. I had I was over at uh, the Ford side of our dealership and the, uh, the head of service uh, came up to me and he said, hey, can you tell me if uh, you know whether or not this is a good knife? And he pulled it out, and I, I was like, I've never heard of it, and, and I started looking over it, and I thought, you know what, this actually is a good knife um, uh, for what it costs. Um, the main thing that interested me, I'll just go ahead and open her up here real quick, is the steel being OS8, and uh, your every man's folding knife is generally not going to be anything that would be anywhere close to a, a good steel. What I generally see is a blade that's not stamped at all. I expect to see China or Taiwan, um, and I definitely don't see them in this blade thickness uh, generally. This is very close to Hinderer uh, XM18 blade thickness. This is about a 0.16 stock. So I carried this around uh, for the, the morning, and I was really impressed with it. He tells me this is his regular user. He keeps it in his truck, and he uses it all the time, and he's had it for a while. Um, so let's go over it real quick. Um, first of all, I, I did not expect that this would be real G10. Uh, it is, it definitely is uh, G10 and you can see here the fibers. I don't know if you can catch that in there on the flat part of it there, but this it does have the uh, fibers of G10 uh, and they're pretty thick. At first I thought it was just G10, but then I got to looking inside of here and I don't know if you can see maybe this way. There are steel cartridge liners on the inside of the knife. You can't see them as well on this side. Um, it actually, the camera angle and the dust that's sitting on there makes it look like it's G10, but you can see that line there. That darker area is actually steel. Uh, so this is a steel liner lock. And I was really impressed with the engagement here for as much as he claims to have been using it. And it certainly does look like he's been using it. Uh, this is still engaging very early. So the point of contact is great. You can see there where it's been engaging on this uh, steel right here. Anyways, we have a pillar construction. Uh, we have, um, you know, by pillar construction, I mean open back, which is great. Uh, this is, is super ugly. I mean, this is, you know, it, it really reminds me of the Oh, not the same exact look, but it's the same idea that I get when I look at a paramilitary too. It's ugly. Uh, but my God, is it ergonomic? Holy cow. I mean, this fills your hand perfectly. It's got a nice ramp right here. It actually has a forward choil. I know that that's the case because there's jimping right there. Um, amazing hand positions there. Uh, the way that the blade is ground, and I don't believe this is a true DLC. I believe it's just sort of paint but or something like that. But whatever it is, it says black oxide finish on uh, Knife Center. And uh, it seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, let's talk about the price real quick. Uh, this is at the top end of what I would consider inexpensive. I personally, I consider anything under $50 to be inexpensive. So I'm still categorizing this as, you know, this is still a, you know, inexpensive knives that I like video, uh, anything over $50. I probably won't do in this mini series. I'll probably just talk about it for the price range. But anyways, I'm still considering this a, an inexpensive knife. Some of you won't, but that's fine. Everybody has a different opinion of that. Uh, anyways, how the blade is ground is the flat carries all the way out to here, and then you have a tanto edge. But this one, I, I believe, in my opinion, is going to be even stronger than a regular tanto because the tip actually drops. So you end up with kind of a stubby tanto tip, but that allows uh, for a, you know added strength over an already strong blade design. The tanto is a, is a very strong blade design, and while it's not my favorite. Uh, uh, blade setup. You know, you, if you've watched my other videos, you hear me talk about that. Um, it certainly do, does have its place in utility, and if it's ground correctly with the right thickness, you know, you can you can call that hard use, absolutely. And uh, this is what I would call a budget hard use folder. Um, he's been using it like that. This has just been in a truck, and it's been used to kind of beat on. Uh, it is an OS8 steel. Let's talk about OS8 real quick. So OS8 used to be uh, considered a, well, I don't know if you want to call it a super steel, uh, but uh, it used to be considered like one of the most excellent steels that you could get. Um, I don't know 
I honestly I don't know what the corrosion resistance of OS8 is. Uh, you know, I might I might edit that in uh, in uh, uh, text down there at the bottom. Um, but uh, I know that it it's reasonable for you know holding an edge. It's not going to be you know even anywhere close even 154 cm or uh, D2 or or anything like that. But it's reasonable. But it's it's notorious for being easy to sharpen, which is great. Uh, the way that this is ground, it's not going to be a toilet paper slicing uh, shred machine or anything like that, but it certainly is going to hold a reasonable uh, working edge, you know, for hard use, and then you can uh, resharpen it fairly easily, though you will have to, you know, if you're going to strop it, you will have to do it two different angles because we've got a completely different angle up here on this tanto edge. Um, let's talk about the action, which I was really surprised about. This actually <laughs> has really good action. Um, you can flick it out though. You know, it's kind of hard to do, uh, because of the placement of the hole here. You can, uh, let's see if I can do this on camera. Almost. You can almost reverse flick it like that, but realistically, you really don't need to be firing it out and making it look all cool like that. Uh, the thumb hole position is, uh, in a good place for regular deployment. You know, you can pull this thing out of your pocket, deploy it, and it locks out. Right now, it has a little bit of side to side blade play and absolutely no vertical blade play whatsoever, which is generally, you know, my, my thing, but I, I can't uh, judge it too quickly on that because I have to assume, come on camera focus. I have to assume that with just a little bit of messing around with the pivot and the body screws, you know, one right here seems to be maybe kind of wanting to come backwards a little bit, uh, that this blade will not only center up, which it's not right now, uh, but that there won't be any blade play whatsoever. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll have to mess with that and find out. Um, but it actually, you know, for being used and not, there's clearly been no maintenance ever on this blade. And uh, it seems to be holding up really, really well for as much as he claims to use it. Blade's reasonably sharp, but he's definitely been cutting stuff with it. I don't know what. Uh, pocket clip can be tip up, tip down, right hand or left hand, which is awesome. And it has what looks to be the standard bench hole, bench made, <laughs> bench hole, bench made three hole pocket clip setup, though it may not be exact. If it is, then that makes the pocket clips modular and that's really, really cool. If not, no big deal. You can put the pocket clip wherever you want. It has a little tiny lanyard hole. That's kind of a joke. I uh, wish it was. Sorry about that. My camera cut off on me. I think my battery was uh, running low, so went back in to charge it, and now we're back. Uh, we were talking about the lanyard hole, kind of a small lanyard hole, kind of a joke, but whatever. You can still get um, paracord in there. Um, so overall, this has a very impressive design. You know, you've got, to recap, we've got steel cartridge liners, which do run all the way through. Yep, definitely all the way through. You can see down there on the butt end, past that last standoff. You've got G10. You've got a very thick uh, stock of OS8 steel. Um, and you've got a liner lock that seems to be holding up pretty well. So, and then ergonomically, you know, doing great there. Now, of course, I don't uh, prefer this to be tipped down, but you can put it wherever you want. Um, coming in and out of the pocket here, I've got my other knife. So, in the pocket out, deploy, use, put away with one hand. God, that action is really smooth for such a um, inexpensive knife. But yeah, golly, you see that swing free there? A little bit of lock stick on that one there, but that's never an issue. You can definitely, yeah, it's not doing it now. But yeah, really smooth action. And like I said, I'm sure you could get this thing um, you know, tighter, make sure, you know, get that blade centered so it's not rubbing. Um, but it's the, it's the lockup that I'm impressed with. Very, very minimal side to side play on something that's been used, you know, probably since he bought it fairly hard and no vertical whatsoever. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is what I would call a budget, fairly hard use folding knife. And it looks like it would hold up pretty well. You know, I don't, I don't think that stock of OS8 is going to snap on you. So I think if you were really using it hard enough, um, uh, your liner lock or, or something in the frame around the pivot is going to fail before the blade actually does. So I'm not saying go out this, go out uh, with this and, and uh, get a hammer and, and baton it through something because despite what anybody says, you should never use the folding knife for that. But if, you know, if you want to, uh, if you've got about, you know, 50 bucks to spend and you want a, a knife that you're not really going to have to worry about too much, you can throw it in your truck and get it out and use it pretty hard and then put it away without uh, anything failing on you, then this is uh, probably a good way to go. Now, Obviously, 
the knife that's going to take the cake in this category, and I've never even handled it, but um, from what everybody else says and, and from what I've seen, um, uh, is the uh, Ontario Rat uh, number one is probably the best budget hard use folding knife out there. And it does beat this by about eight bucks. I think you can get it for about $43 right now. Could be, could be wrong about that. But you know, their previous model or the, the, uh, the last gen of that was Aus 8. It was a thinner stock, but they've since upgraded it to D2, which is definitely a better steel, uh, than Aus 8, uh, in terms of, um, you know, edge holding and toughness and corrosion resistance, I think, and things like that. Again, I might edit my, what I'm saying there if I'm wrong, but, uh, no, this is impressive, and I'd never heard of this before. I'd never heard of uh, 511 or 5.11, or I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but um, this is an impressive knife, and $50, see, like I said, we're getting on the, the, the upper end of what I consider to be inexpensive, but that's a lot of money to a lot of people. You know, the, the first uh, uh, fairly expensive knife that I bought was around $50, that blur. I think it was like $63 at the time. And, uh, that, uh, you know, I remember being like, uh, did I really want to blow that on, on that knife? But for 50 bucks, I think this is a good knife. Um, I think that this, you know, is, is an impressive setup. Uh, you're, you're not going to have, um, you know, perfect fit and finish. You know, you can see there like the, uh, where they've ground the tip is, is at a little bit, uh, you know, at least that line there's a little bit of an angle. Um, but little things like that, you know, it's not going to be, it's probably not ever going to be perfectly centered. Um, you may not ever, per, you know, completely get rid of the side to side play, but again, that's really to be expected. The liner seems to be holding up really well, though. The pocket clip seems to be holding up well. The screws seem to be staying in for the most part, less this one, um, which, you know, you can just screw them back in. I wish they had gone all the way through, but I can understand why they didn't with this being G10 on both sides. Um, but, you know, really good overall construction. I, there's not really much to complain about here. So this is an interesting knife and, and it was an, it was an oddball. I don't always expect to run into, you know, just a regular person who's not a knife nut, who's carrying something like this almost by accident. You know, I don't know if he just went in and was like, I feel like spending 50 bucks on a knife and he just accidentally got something that's actually pretty good in my opinion or, you know, or, or what, I don't know if he graduated to this, but I was really surprised to see Aus 8 on there. Despite it not being a super steel by any means, it's certainly better than what the everyday person uh, carries. This is not made in the United States. It is made in Taiwan, so keep that in mind. Um, not that that, you know, really matters, but uh, interesting. Also, there's a maker on here by the name of uh, Mike Vellenkamp, and I don't know anything about him, and uh, maybe that will discredit uh, my knowledge of some people will go, oh, you don't know who that is. Oh my gosh. You know, how can you even review this knife? Well, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm aware of a lot of custom makers, um, but uh, that's not one of them. So if you know him and you like his stuff, I imagine you'll like this maybe even more. Um, if you don't know who he is, then you probably won't care. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as the overall design for this knife, really good. Very impressed with how this is set up. Uh, it weighs about five ounces. It's pretty big in the pocket, but not terrible, not the worst that I've ever seen. You know, if you're going to be using this as a way, this is not an office carry knife. This is a, you know, on a construction side or out, you know, I guess doing field work or, you know, this is an out, outside, throw it in your truck, use it, you know, when you're going to be using something fairly hard kind of knife, you know, and it's ground appropriately for that. Um, so all, all those things considered, I think it, uh, I think it'll perform uh, tasks that it was designed to uh, excel at uh, pretty well. So, uh, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Just wanted to show this off. Um, I do have some interesting content coming. I have something coming in the mail that I'm excited to uh, show. And, uh, I have, um, how do I say this without spoiling it? I have, uh, a, an interesting series of videos that I'm going to be doing uh, over a, a, you know, a long period of time. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of get into that more when this thing comes, um, but, uh, anyway, so, uh, keep your eyes out for that video. It should be here sometime this week and we'll go over that. But, uh, if you enjoy the video today, please leave a like. And, uh, if you are new to the channel, please explore my other content. I do have uh, lots of other knives, both inexpensive and expensive that I do or don't like. Uh, so check those out definitely. And if you enjoy my content, then please subscribe and turn those notifications on because there's going to be a lot more, uh, regular content to content to come. So that's it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.